go. <clears throat> Hello, my name is David Knight. Uh, I'm a photographer and I was born in Warsaw in the West Midlands and have been taking photographs for the last 50 years. The work that's on show at the exhibition at the Granary at Western Hall at the moment reflects 50 years of my photography. It's a retrospective and looks at photographs that were taken in Wolverhampton in the 1970s and probably a few that are a bit earlier than that as well, dating back from the original Hell's Angels to more latter-day punks that are around the area now. And we can see just the just to the left of you here. This is some to, on, a, on a section did on the interfaith groups in the area, Wolverhampton. Mm -hmm. Indeed, in the 1980s, 1990s, I did a lot of work with the interfaith groups. I was working out in Bangkok, and very much welcomed um, one of the monks from the leading Wat temples in Bangkok to come over and open up the Buddha Vihara in Wolverhampton. And is that who we've got here and on the that's picture? That's who we've got now. This yeah. is this is uh, his Sampun, yes. And it, and it must and experience the people you've you've kind of met along the way. I mean, if we just look along here, so multicultural now, isn't it, Wolverhampton? I guess was that just just kind of starting at the yeah, time that you I were think snapping? Yeah, uh, I mean, I joined the art college, started doing some teaching there in 1963, and uh, it was all kicking off in the early 60s, yeah. and uh, we had a, a lot of massive changes in Wolverhampton from that period up till now. So it's been great watching it all change and being very fortunate to record it over the yeah. years and have it in front of us now. And you mentioned the Hells Angels, if we come along here. This was a, a chap you became friends with and stayed in touch with for a long time. Who this, have got this, here? this is Bill. Uh, yeah. I met him. The BBC had done a fairly notorious uh, piece of filming on the Hells Angels in Wolverhampton in the 1960s, directed by Paul Watson, and it uh, really knocked them around a bit. I mean, they were... Tough guys, they came on their Harley Davidsons, they were with their machetes, they were with all their type of uh, chain gear and everything. Yeah. But they were softies, they were really, really yeah. were softies when you get to know them. And uh, I broached the subject with Bill to see whether he'd come and have some photographs taken in the new studios in, um, in the art college, which yeah. he said yes. And the entire gang, this group of them here, uh, on that day, uh, rolled up in their Harleys, tore around all the studios and uh, corridors of the art college, you couldn't have a better opening than an art college than that in 1970. You, I was going to say, you weren't fired on the no, spot. No, I was called, to, I was called <laughs> to the principal's office to explain what I'd done. But uh, everybody thought it was great. Yeah. And then if we just scoot round, we've got um, a more modern day punk, All Brighton. Uh, an All Brighton punk. Um, I saw him in uh, the Telford uh, shopping centre a few years ago with all his mates. And he looked absolutely magnificent, you know, fantastic hairstyle and all the glitter and everything that went with the punk scene at that time. Yeah. So a bit reluctantly, I went up and asked him with all his mates if I could photograph him. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, yeah. He was a willing model. Uh, and uh, so we did three photo sessions, some on location, some in my studio. And the funniest is when I went to collect him from All Brighton. Uh, his hair was so so fantastically done up that uh, he couldn't sit down in the car. We had to lie him down in the car from <laughs> right to, uh, to the studio to photograph yeah. him. Yeah, brilliant. A hairstyle you ever thought about copying? Uh, I don't think mine had ever quite get to that level. No, <laughs> yeah. but very magnificent. God knows how many hours it took him to uh, to get it made up. But uh, super guy, absolutely super. And do you think? I mean, you, you still snapping now? Yes, I'm um, still. Do you well, think people are more wary now? Obviously, you know, like you're saying, you're approaching this lad. And do you, do you think back in the day to how it is now, do you think people are just a little bit more, oh, no, I don't want to get involved? And it's a, it's a different yeah, kind I of think, environment? I, I, th I think it's culturally as well. Because when I first went out into um, China in the 80s, um, only five, six years after the Cultural Revolution had finished, um, a lot of people thought in those days, when you took, certainly the Chinese, when you took photographs of them, that when you took a photograph, you were taking their spirit away. Mm. So they didn't like the idea of you taking it. You were Guaylo, you were White Devil. Yeah. And uh, the idea of taking a photograph of somebody was that you took that spirit away. I think in the West, we have a totally different approach to it now. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a mixture now. Some people who love having the photographs taken and others who just want to cover their heads up immediately and get a camera out. And really. yeah. so it's, it's a real mix at the moment. Do you think with there being such an abundance of pictures now, I'm thinking everyone taking pictures on their phones, that, that there is a difference between a real good documentary image and you know, the publications that, that used to be. Do you, do you think that we still hold good quality images in the same regard and we, we're still a platform for them to be used and seen? I think, or? I, I think it's easier to take photographs now than it's ever been, but it depends on what you call a photograph. And I still think you've got to see an image. I still think you've got to be able to see something 
uh, and be aware of what you're looking at. And I think that's where the difference lies. And I think the phone has made it easier, but in many ways it's also made it more difficult because it's so instant uh, that you don't reflect on it. You can take a thousand either side of it and still not sure yeah. what you've done, but somewhere along there you can select one. Yeah. So I think that if you're looking at really great photographers, they do capture that moment in time and uh, know exactly that precise moment in which to, when to push the shutter and get what they want. And there's some images which um, we'll, we'll show on here that there's a couple from the, the old Wolverhampton market as was and the, yeah. some of the old, old streets in Wolverhampton. And you were saying that looking back now, Wolverhampton's just changed so much that you almost feel you would have documented that even more so. But I guess at the time, you know, it's it not till not till hindsight things. and you see the changes. Yeah, it's one of those awful things you think about at the time and you think, now, gosh, I should have really gone in and photographed it a lot more, photographed the people, photographed the building. I mean, the market hall is a good example, really, because that was just totally demolished. There was hardly anything kept of it. Yeah. And in fact, it was a group of us at the art college that uh, type of... Uh, went along one day and, uh, I suppose, if you like, um, stole the, um, the iron gates because they were just being thrown away. And those iron gates are still in the art college to this day. They've all been cleaned up and the, the wrought iron is still there. So they'd have just been on the scrap heap? They'd have just gone, they? yeah. yeah that was going completely. And yeah. uh, it was sad because they were with a camera and you weren't really seeing it as you should have been at that time. You didn't realise it. I think it was actually disappearing as it was. So, David, the image just here, you'd say that's probably your, if you had to pick one in the exhibition, probably be this one. Yeah? I think it's one of my favourites, partly because it's got memories. And I think that um, it's because of the memories, not necessarily because it's, uh, I think it's a great photograph, although I like the photograph. This is taken in um, northern Vietnam on the Lao border. Yeah. Um, it was taken about uh, 12 years ago. And uh, it was um, wonderful working with these kids up on the rice fields up there. Here really were great to work with and uh, was working out there many years before I actually took a lot of stuff out for them, pencils and crayons and things like yeah. that so they could enjoy that. And then this little girl here is type of eating um, sugar cane, raw sugar cane and um, they were lovely and it was a lovely experience for two or three days being in this village right on the edge of the Himalayas actually working with them. And if we just, just as a contrast to that, if we flip round, this was you hot air ballooning and yeah. uh, you, what was the temperature on this one you were saying this, just off camera earlier? This is minus 25. Um, yeah. It went terribly wrong. Um, if you're ballooning in uh, Turkey these days, they normally have to get uh, permission from the um, uh, Turkish Air Force, which yeah. they did. It was all yeah. going very well. We climbed up quite high uh, and then suddenly the temperature dropped. We got into a, a very different type of uh, pressure, air pressure, and uh, we couldn't land because the wind got us. So we had to go higher to get over some of the mountains over here. Yeah. And in doing that, we went up to minus 25. And uh, we had two Chinese girls in the balloon who were um, not equipped really to come with us. Yeah. And um, we stayed in the balloon for about an hour and a half, which was far too long than we should have done. Yeah. And when we landed, they had to be lifted out of the balloon and sadly died of hypothermia. Just a bit later. Really? So um, were well, you saying your, your finger stuck to the camera? It was that cold. It was so it? cold that my fingers were literally yeah. holding the metal of the camera. So that just was sticking to it. You just couldn't take any photographs at the end. So that could have been the end of yourself, really. It it? That been. was a close yeah. call, that one. I had to stand in a shower for about an hour and a half yeah. afterwards, <laughs> watching, feeling my body. Yeah. <laughs> it was like ice inside your body, actually. Yeah. It was very cold.